But like myself, I think you're going to be very interested in this story that we're going to tell you. And in this age of missiles and man-made moons, it takes on added significance. <laughs> Have you ever sat at a wobbly cafe table and spilled your coffee? Annoying, isn't it? You might get a stain on your trousers. So what do you call it when a drilling rig explodes, releasing millions of gallons of crude oil into the ocean? Oh, that's an oil spill. Good evening, I'm Shannon Bremen tonight from Brett Bear. President Obama says the federal government shares responsibility for the conditions that led to the disastrous Gulf oil spill, and he vowed today that things are going to change. Change has come to America. The Deepwater Horizon disaster in 2010 was called a spill, as though it were an unfortunate coffee accident. But investigations found that there were already known problems with the well. So to use the word spill sidesteps the fact that someone might be to blame. Public debates about science and the environment are sometimes won or lost as soon as the language to describe things is chosen. That's why the American pollster Frank Luntz once advised the Republican Party, it's time for us to start talking about climate change instead of global warming. Because climate change is less frightening. Climate change sounds like what happens when you go on holiday or turn on the aircon. It also hides the truth that most global warming is caused by burning the oil that hasn't been spilled. I've got a question about global warming. I, I suppose I want to know what is your plan? Good. Um, we, uh, first of all, I, there is uh, the, uh, the globe is warming. Exciting new alternatives to burning oil include biofuels, a name that sounds nice and natural. But crude oil is made from dead plants and animals, so it's just as bio as the corn that's turned into biofuel. And burning biofuels releases greenhouse gases too. Some people think we should call them agrofuels, which sounds more obviously like trouble. Another potential energy source is something called clean coal, at least if you believe Mitt Romney. He said, By the way, I like coal. I'm going to make sure we can continue to burn clean coal. He didn't explain how you can continue doing something that you never started, because clean coal doesn't actually exist. So right now, clean coal is the energy equivalent of a unicorn. And now, the Coca-Cola Company invites you to enjoy... Don't wait to be told. You need palm olive gold. I get to clean the bathroom bowl. Vanish. The new disinfectant bathroom bowl cleaner. You need palm olive gold. Concentrated with ammonia. Wow. Vanish. Vanish? A dollar twenty-nine with Gillette Blue Blade dispenser and handy travel case. New Mum cream deodorant now with M3. Got the message? Attractive terminology makes everything sound better whether it's clean, or bio, or even organic. Organic food itself is a feel-good term of unspeak. Organic is often contrasted with chemical farming, but chemicals are all there is. Organic farming standards also allow the use of some toxic pesticides. The difference is that organic pesticides are natural, but then so are deadly spiders and syphilis. Using terms from nature and farming for rather less idyllic practices is a common trick. The Japanese killing of whales is often referred to as a harvest. Well, what you normally harvest is a plant crop. To call the killing of mammals with explosive harpoons a harvest is deliberately to unspeak violence against sentient beings. In the autumn of 2012, the British government announced a nationwide cull of badgers. The word cull originally meant to select, but then came to mean slaughtering a certain proportion of an animal population, as though mammals were weeds. This cull would be accomplished through free shooting, although the badgers probably wouldn't feel very free when stalked by people wanting to shotgun them in the face. Thankfully, badger lovers led a public outcry against badger Geddon, and the government finally announced that the cull would go ahead as planned next year. Environmentalists like to advocate what they call green living, 
which doesn't mean dressing up like a leprechaun or Kermit the Frog. But how nice is nature anyway? The philosopher David Hume said that of all words, there is none more ambiguous and equivocal than nature. Some people speak of nature as a benign friend to the economy, a source of natural capital and natural wealth. But nature also seems to be an inscrutable source of natural disasters. Even if some natural disasters, like Hurricane Katrina, are made much worse because they are also human disasters caused by bad planning and response, and subsequently blamed on a nature who can't talk back. Earth-loving greens will continue to invoke the eternal benign virtue of Mother Nature. But in a future of pandemic disease and climate chaos caused by burning fossil fuels, it looks more as though Mother Nature is going to be out to get us all.